Hello, my name is Teresa Soto, and today I'd like to invite you to consider with me the courage that it takes to be inclusive. We, when we talk about inclusivity, we could be talking about a range of things. In this case, we're talking about what it takes for people who are differently abled to participate. Now, this could be physical ability, like walking or seeing or hearing, or it could refer to things we can't see, like chronic pain or mental health issues or learning disabilities. Now, any of these or all of these really affect how people experience community, so it's important for us to be supportive and to understand what helps them participate. One way that we can begin this supporting process is to examine our own language. Now, you've probably heard this insult. It's lame. People call things like jokes or movies or even songs by that term if they don't like them. But I want to point out to you that even when you don't mean it that way, you're mixing together disability with insult. And the truth is that being disabled is just one of the ways to be human. So it doesn't really work to mix it together. No one wants to be the standard insult. And you'll hear it in different ways also. Not as direct insults, but as metaphors. So... For example, the city was crippled by snow. No, not really it wasn't. Being crippled is a real thing that real people experience. And when you use that word to say that this, the city was less functioning, then what you're doing is using it as an insult, an automatic insult. And so we can do better than that. And as we check our own language and improve it, we're making space for people with disabilities to participate with us without being the standard insult. Another way you can use your language is to build participation with people who are disabled. Now, I'm going to tell you, you've already got a head start on this. You're used to participating with people in different ways. So, when someone comes over to your house who's a vegetarian, you don't make them pork chops. If they're allergic to gluten, you make sure there's gluten-free food because that's how you know that they'll be able to be welcomed and to participate. It's sort of related. The thing is to ask people who are differently abled what would help you best participate with us is sometimes a little scary. I understand. You don't want to offend them. You don't want to put them on the spot. So that actually reminds me of someone else who had very important work to do who was not sure about doing it. In the Hebrew scripture, at the beginning of the book of Joshua, Joshua is called to leadership. And he needs to lead and care for the people, but he's not sure about it. He's young. He doesn't have that much experience. And so, he's not prepared to do it yet. But, God says this to Joshua. Be strong and of a good courage. I will help you. You know what? We can be courageous in community because we have the help of each other. And we're also able to connect with the people that we'd like to build community with and offer them ways to participate and have those conversations. Sometimes you might make a mistake. You can apologize and you can begin again. You can be strong and of a good courage. So, a conversation for participation, like, oh, you'd like to be in the choir? How can we make that happen? That's a lot different than a lot of the other conversations you can imagine. And you can do it. And it will make a big difference. Even though you might have to collect your courage when you begin. Another thing that we can think about once we're used to having a conversation is to consider that part of what's hard for us is that we're not sure. 
And when you're not sure, you don't want to make a mistake. But as you begin to have those conversations for participation, you can bring all your intention, all your interest, all your commitment for others to the conversation, and that will make a big difference. I want to read to you just a bit from The Velveteen Rabbit. Because one of the things involved in this process of having conversations for participation is that you have an open and available heart. And so the rabbit and the skin horse are talking and the rabbit says, does it hurt? Sometimes, said the skin horse, for he was always truthful. But when you are real, you don't mind being hurt. Does it happen all at once? Like being wound up? Or bit by bit? It doesn't happen all at once, said the skin horse. You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't often happen to people who break easily or have sharp edges or have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes drop out and you get loose in the joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all because once you are real, you can't be ugly except to people who don't understand. So, it might take some checking of your language. It might take some courageous conversations. But you can become inclusive. And it will be beautiful. It will be all right. Well, I wish you the best. Thank you.